Greg's all frog here. Let's try Ortis Rainy. So um, it's new. Uh, I may, it may even just be a two-episode thing, but it's it's a game I've been playing a little bit and having a lot of fun doing. Uh, I reached out to the designer, got permission to record this, put this out there. You definitely should, uh, I think, check it out. But you know, that's what this video is all about to see if you kind of like it. So Ortis Rainy is a new game by John Sudbury, and uh, John Sudbury Games is out of Massachusetts. And it's, uh, I believe it was originally a card game that was turned into a computer game. It may have been the other way around, but regardless, it, it uses cards. And what it appears to, to do is draw on the uh, sort of tabletop simulator mechanics, whether it, it's licensed from that directly or it just is created something that looks very similar, I don't know. But it is... Um, it's a deck building game, sort of. Uh, it's it's sort of really interesting. Let me just do the about here. So the late Anglo-Saxon era in English history is a time of warring earls. Minor kings all, they claim whatever lands they can. They establish fiefs, cultivate powerful vassals, and fight and engage in endless political struggles. All the while, the Vikings roam not just the sea, but the land. Is it truly? It is truly a dark age, or is it? This is Ordus Reni, the birth of the kingdom. Lasting for 600 years until the Norman conquest of 1066, the Anglo-Saxon era decides the future of a great kingdom that will be called England. The ancient world is dead, the world is reborn. Anyone can become a king through politics or and diplomacy, excuse me, or by the blade. And it's always in the end by the blade. Will it be you? And then you can see there's Ordus Reni Premium. It's a tabletop game. You can click for more info. I'm not going to do that, of course. John Sudbury Games, Somerville, Massachusetts. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I do have permission to broadcast this. It gives you the change log. You can't click on rules or guides. It doesn't take you anywhere. But you can go to the website. It's a very extensive website. Options are pretty pretty limited. It's music and effects volume. Um, they're both maybe too low. I don't know. They're, they feel low to me, but a lot of times it ends up being louder in video, so I'm not going to bother with it. You can, of course, set window and um, we'll do the full thing. Um, email alerts. I'm not really sure what that's for. And we'll go back. All right, so there was a big training thing, actually. This this was cool. Went through all of these different things. It taught you how the game works. There's combat, politics, Vikings, fate, mercenaries, Joss, and Earl Dunn. But we're going to get right into it, I think, rather than go through that. Um, if I can figure out how to go back. Oh, there we go. And we'll go back, and we're just going to play. Now, there's a deck building aspect to this. You can go to the deck builder. I can create a new deck based on the cards that I own. So I have these cards that are available to us. And it may even not be what I own. It's just you have these cards. And you have four by, it looks like you have 24 cards in your deck. You can pick from all of these cards. I kind of know what most of them do. Um, these are castles. You use these to define your fiefs. You kind of need those. So there you go. It's to build a fief. You place a castle. You have a new fief. When your last fief is done, uh, you lose through the sword, essentially, is what it is. So you want to make sure you at least have a, always one fief out there. Um, there, you can attach other properties to it. So there's like, um, there's fields and churches and all this other stuff that can go with the fief. You lose the fief, you lose the stuff. So it's kind of, you know, half of one. And you can put, uh, lords into this thing that essentially can rule. So that's all cool. Uh, this is an example of one of the lords. It's a prince. Prince is considered to be a face card. You can install him into a castle or a palace to make him a lord. Um, if you're assassinated, because there are assassinations, the, the realm still remains. But then you can also put the, the prince in uh, battle. So there are battles. Prince lords are able to return home after a normal battle. Um, and then you can claim sw spoils. If there's a prince lord uh, during a successful raid or siege, they can get a spoil. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then you can play, excuse me, a banner on the prince lord to bequeath the title. So it gets rid of the prince lord and the banner. And then you reshuffle your discard pile into your earl deck. Because if you draw out, you lose. So, essentially, it's a way to get your discards back into your deck so you don't mill yourself to death. Princes can also joust. Um, so, they are really quite good in jousting, which we could talk about. Um, but the catch is you can only have one in play at any given time. You can have as many as you want in your deck up to the deck limit, but you can only have one played. These are treachery cards. This is a political thing. This is how you assassinate a lord. You play this card out, um, and if it is uncontested, then the uh, lord is killed. If it's not a prince lord, then their fief goes with them, but princes obviously can survive. Um, you can also target the hand to make them discard two cards at random, and it also gets rid of a mercenary, so treachery is good for that. Um, it can be defended against. These are the, the lands I was talking about. You attach a land to a fief, you place it next to the castle or the palace. After placing a land, you immediately draw one army card or two army cards if there's a market town, so things can, can trigger off each other and build beggar, which is good. Um, every time you have a land, that's what lets you field armies, so for each uh, land, you get an army or two if there's a market town. Basically, market town double the effect of the uh, fields. 
And this is also what lets you recruit armies. So if you have one land, you get to recruit one army. If you have two uh, lands, you get to recruit two armies, and it doubles if there's a market town. Um, in addition to that, when you when you play a land, you automatically get that army. So that's automatic. But you could do it as an action later. Basically, you get one action a turn, and there's some free actions. These are the lords. So I'll just that's what they look like. You could sell them as lords, or you could play them from the hand. They're discarded immediately. If they were in a castle and you play them and they survive because they have one defense, then they will go back to the castle. And then um, if we fielded one of those, we can take a, seat, a spoil, of course. You can also send these guys as emissaries to talk to the Vikings because we want to influence the Vikings not to attack us. We'd rather have them attack our enemies, and they count as one influence, so that's pretty good. If there's a political struggle, then they could be uh, played to support struggles, and they can uh, joust. These are the intrigue cards, so you can actually steal fiefs, steal armies, and steal mercenaries. They can be contested. There's your market towns. They basically double uh, the fiefs, uh, double the, the lands in the fief. This is your champion. You can install a champion in a castle or a palace to make him a lord, um, and then he gains added longevity in normal battles. Uh, champions, if played from the hand, they're discarded. So anything basically played from the hand is, is discarded at the end. Anything that play, is played from in play will remain, assuming they don't take too much damage. Um, tilting in a joust, the champion is a wild card in the joust. So it counts as either a prince or a vassal. So it's the best absolute thing that you can have in a joust. We'll talk about all that stuff. These are the allies. They counter offensive treachery or intrigue. Um, it creates essentially a political struggle to determine if it's successful. So if you counter a political card and it's not, there's no vassal support on their side, it's, it's countered. But if they play a vassal, then you have to play a vassal. If they play a vassal, then you have to and get so on and so forth until there are no more cards to play. This is the church. You attach it to a fief. Um, it decides the battle. So there's a battle system that you're going to draw a card randomly. And I don't remember the exact percentage, but there's a certain amount that say defenders uh, win, certain that say attackers win, which means if the defenders win, they take no damage. If the attackers win, they take no damage. And there's a couple that say church decide. So if you have a church, then you get to decide. Um, again, if there's no cathedral in play. Um, I'm sorry, I reversed the cathedral. I was thinking of the cathedral. The cathedral, the cathedral lets you decide. Otherwise, whoever has the most churches is the church decides battle card. And if it, if you're, they're equal, then it's a normal battle, and the normal battle means both sides take damage. Da -da -da -do. Um, if there is a cathedral in play, normally the other side cannot bequeath an earldom to reshuffle their deck, but if you have a church of your own, oh, that's, that's good. Um, if there's an abbot and a fief that includes a church, it can be used to make an earl reveal their hand to the table, so eventually they play face up. Monks are emissaries to the Vikings. They count as two cubes, so that's very good. They can go into a lord to make them an abbot, and that's, of course, how you do the reveal. So if there is an abbot there, you can make an earl reveal their hand. Um, you can play them in battle, but it's a defensive thing. So it's basically you want to play them so you can take uh, more damage, so you lose less stuff. The banquets are political. You just draw two cards. It's pretty straightforward. And then you can take any free actions, of course, and then you draw a card to end your turn because that's how the turn works. What do we have up here? We have the cathedral, so you attach it to get the church decides battled on your side, basically. It stops bequeathing, and then you can do an abbot reveal if you have that, because basically cathedrals essentially count as churches. They're just more, which makes sense. There's a mercenary. You can put him into battle straight from your hand. If you uh, do that, uh, I wouldn't, but you can place them directly into your earldom, not having to attach them to a fife. If you do, then they get an extra slot. Normally, you can only have so many cards coming into battle as your lands, but if you have a mercenary, the mercenary can take one with them. Uh, -boo -boo -boo. Any combination of mercy or garrison army can be fielded into battle. Fielding mercenary or garrison army does not require lands which is the big thing. And then these are your banners. Banners do a number of, number of things. One, you play it on your Prince Lord, so they have to be in a castle, but you play it on your Prince Lord to bequeath your Earldom. Those two cards are discarded, and then your whole discard pile gets reshuffled. You can become the King. King has a significant advantage. Um, if you play two or more uncontested banner cards, you become the King, which means um, if you play one, your opponent plays one, then you gotta play two more unanswered, essentially. You can initiate a joust with that, and we'll talk about that, or you can opt out if you have a banner. All right, those are the different cards. You can put them together and try and kill it, build your own deck. We're not going to bother with that. There's a couple of pre-made pre decks, essentially. So land and army, it looks like this. It's got mostly lands. It's got market towns to help double that. And then you get army cards. The army cards you don't see here because it's just a deck of army cards that essentially you guys share. 
If you want to go with a Lord strategy, you can do that. If you'd rather do an Emissary Church strategy, you could do that, because the Vikings are pretty powerful, or you could do politics, and those are just the different decks that are in place. So we can just play. You can find a match, you can play online. Just go into a matching server, it's okay. You can challenge your friends if you knew somebody specifically, or you can just battle AI. And what we're gonna do for now is we're just gonna battle the AI. You can have up to four people playing together, and you can set their difficulty level. I don't really want to play the land and army deck, so I'm gonna pick something else. I want to play the, um, actually, you know what? I will play Land and Army because it's easiest to discuss. So as we play it, we'll discuss how I'm playing and what's going on. And we'll just, I'm Purple Frog. I can't get purple. It's the closest I can do. I tried. Because you, you can change it, but alas. So, I mean, that's reddish, but I like the blue better. If I can't have purple, I'll have blue. And then we'll fight the evil yellow. And uh, easy, medium, hard. That's where it goes. I can get rid of them. I can add them. We're just going to do straight up like that. We could set options. There's tournament rules we could start with. Um, blah, 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 and we're not going to bother doing that. Let's just play. All right. So this is a card game. Your turn is very simple. You play a card, you take free actions, you draw a card to end your turn. And you can see why this, this looks very much like Tabletop Simulator. This decides who goes first. Uh, that's us, because we're blue. Huzzah. I just noticed these flags, so they give us options to do something. Whatever. Uh, you can mulligan. This is not a great hand, so we will mulligan because it gives us a church, uh, an ally card, and three market towns, but no no lands. So we need some lands in here. So we reshuffle, and we get to draw again. That's, you know, what we're stuck with. It's not better, but we can get it. That at least lets us draw two cards. So how you play, basically, is you take cards and you put them into the center. As a free action, you can do what's called um, castle cards, I think is what they say, or tower cards, you can tower them, which is just turn cards face down in front of you and they act as defense, which we'll have to do on the first turn because we don't have anything um, worth going out against. This is the Viking mechanic. Every turn, two people play, the, there's no combat, the Viking counter progresses to one. When it gets all the way up to eight, then the Vikings will start coming in and playing. Whoever has tokens in this bag, right now we're even, They'll draw one every turn, and they're not discarded, so it's just continual draw. And that person gets to control the Vikings for that turn, so it's a, it's a pretty big advantage. Now, we have no monks to send over there, but we do have some lords. Oh, that's the main menu. Okay, cool. Didn't know that. We'll continue. What's this? Click the Add Friends button in the lower right to send friend requests. Oh, okay. Well, if we had friends, we could chat with them. And then these are the options here, whatever they may happen to be. I've never played them. We'll, we'll figure it out later as we go along. So what we're going to do is we're going to play... Um, we're going to play the Banquet to draw two cards. That's awful. Not real good. So we're going to Tower uh, because we need some defense. So you can select as many cards out of your hand as you'd like. Um, I could have installed the Prince. I chose not to. Allies are good. The Church is okay. I'm going to Tower. I'm not going to play the Banner game, so I'm going to Tower the Banner and the Church just to get some defense up there. And then draw a card to end my turn. So that's good. Next turn we'll, we'll have some land or we'll, maybe we'll install our Lord. We'll see what he's doing. He's sending an Emissary. That's not good. So he's more likely to control the Vikings. We could flat out attack, because we have a Prince Lord we could play from our hand. We don't want to do that. We could send him as an emissary, which is kind of tempting. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to play a, play into our fief. So we grab a soldier. There's soldiers and knights. Those are the only types. And then we're not going to tower any more cards. We're fine with that level of defense. And our turn is over. He is playing... A what? I can't see it from this far away. That's a mercenary, okay. So he can he can attack now. So we need to be careful about that a little bit. <clears throat> what would we like to do? We could play the Prince Lord for some defense. I think that's a good idea. So we can help defend our, our estate. Uh, I'm not going to tower anything else right now. We will tower our market town next turn, though. You only need the one. You don't need two. That's real bad. Every time you send an emissary, it brings the Vikings closer too, by the way, so gotta be careful of that. Um I think we play a market town. I think we tower a market town. So you can see what you've already discarded, so you just kind of have a view. And we're done. Alright, that'll be good. So next time we'll be able to draw two guys and I think we'll attack. We still have the possibility of, of controlling the Vikings, so we'll play this to recruit for free. So we get two soldiers. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we can't attack the same turn, but we will attack the next turn. 
And uh, we'll draw a card and go. So we have another Prince Lord that we could play out of our hand. All right. So we're going to have combat here. I could recruit more guys. That would allow me to recruit four guys now because I have two lands times two because of the, the market town. But there's really no reason to do that. Let's just attack. Now we have to pick who we're attacking. So this is choosing the attacker, not what we're attacking. So we're attacking red. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe actually we do get to pick. In the tutorials, it, it always made you pick your attacker. But we're going to attack. Um, the towers will stand as defense. Or we could try and just go straight there. I'm going to try and go straight there. And what we're going to do is we're going to send... Uh, we could send two of these dudes. So we'll open this hand. We'll send one of them. Two of them. And we'll send our Prince Lord. So we're going to attack for three damage. and Because I can't attack... I can't. Oh, I can send him. Why can I send him? Oh, because of the market town. Derp. It doubles everything. So we're gonna we're just gonna attack with everything. So we're gonna resolve the battle. We we have a last chance. Is this sure is you sure that's what you want to do? That is what we want to do. So we resolve the battle, and we failed because I have missed something, clearly. Should have attacked the towers first, I guess. I'm very confused on what happened there. It was definitely not a battle. We have a lot of ally cards, man. Alright. We're going to try again. Let's attack the tower straight up. That white tile, it means there was an attack, so you can't possibly put a black tile in, which is, you know, the good thing. We're going to confirm that. All right, he's going to defend with his lord. The shield means defenders win, which is bad, so they cannot take damage. Select lord to save. I don't know what that means. I will decline. We'll put the damage there. So this tells you how much damage you have left to assign. We don't want the Prince Lord to attack, die, so we'll, we'll do that. That is turning out unfortunate. That is not what I expected. This is a learning. We're trying this out, seeing how we like it. It's interesting so far. So he's attacking six. I'm defending three. Um, so we will play a Prince out of our hand. And two of these dudes. Alright, that's normal battle. So I have six damage to assign. It's all assigned. He didn't lose anybody. Oh no, he did lose some, but not enough. That'll go back, and then the Vikings will, will approach at some point. We need more cards. That works out okay. And I'm going to tower one of those cards. Let's build our defenses a little bit more. Good. We'll be able to install a prince next turn if we want, or we could use uh, fiefdom. He's attacking. I cannot defend. Well, I choose not to defend. I'm not going to lose that. Three damage comes out, and I can pick which cards I want to lose. So I'm going to lose those three. And keep that guy there. All right, so I'm going to install a prince lord. I will uh, tower to get that back. Oh, I apparently can't bring that back. Oh, we're still going to do that anyway because we need more. We need more defenses. Okay, he's sending three against my three. I will concede. That's fine. This is not going well for us. Basically, is what's happening here. So this will give me three cards, or two cards. So I have some defense. Not enough, but some. He will attack again with six. That's not good. This will end everything. That's not enough defense, but we'll select it anyway, so at least we can put up a defense. Because we could have got defender wins, right? So you don't want to just immediately concede. Uh, and then I have to kill things. Unfortunately. Oh, I almost want to let the Vikings come in. Come on, why are there no knights? It's bad luck. Bad luck indeed. Another mercenary. Perfect. Alright. 
Allow me to control them. Come on, blue. Nah, I didn't think so. So this is going to be the end. Basically, there's these guys are level ones. These guys are two each. Once it gets five worth of strength or more, that's when they attack. But they always draw three cards to begin with. So this is going to be bad. Again, we could end up with defender wins. So let's hope. Nope, normal battle. So that'll be bad. So the Vikings attack us. That's the five damage. It's actually the best way I could do that. Towers do help to defend, but that's not. This isn't great. We are losing because we're going to mill out here soon. Yeah, I have three cards left. This is not good. Because I don't have a banner left to bequeath. I think I only have the two in the deck. Yes, I know I have three. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. I'm going to recruit. Ooh, a knight. That's good. Why did I only recruit one card? I have two fiefs. Something strange there. He's attacking with everything. This will do it, do it all again. We were just hoping for defender wins. We didn't get it. So that's all the damage. Which is not good. He should get it, get us on the next turn. Oh, the Vikings are going to go. Me. That's not me. Well, that'll do it. <laughs> I can't defend against them. Um... Oh, attacker wins. That's awful. Yeah, that's bad. I still have one damage left over. I have nothing left. I can install him in for just some token defense, basically. We tower both of these two cards, and then we continue, and then he will destroy us on the next turn, or we'll, we'll mill ourselves. Either way, this is a horrible, horrible loss. <laughs> and the Vikings will do his job for him. Lucky man. Get out there! Stop them! That is not Defender wins. Alas. We take all the damage. It leaves us wide open for him. We'll play it out, of course, because we have to. You only lose when you draw a card, so we or when you draw and you cannot. So we have a chance. It's not a good one, but we have a chance. What is this now? Oh, he's assassinating. Oh, good lord. And I have no, I have no defense, so I have to concede. So he dies, and the Vikings will kill me off probably. Oh my god, we get to control the Vikings. It won't help. We won't be able to kill him. Um, we attack him, obviously. Um, we're going to attack the towers. It's the only way to get me through. I, I fully expected that to be defender win, by the way. Um, we'll kill off that guy so he can't kill me with him. Well, we have to attack. We will lose, but we have to attack. Yay! Attacker wins. Church decides. I thought that was church decides. Apparently not. Well, then I have to draw a card and I lose. Alas. That is uh, Ordis Rainey. It's it's really complicated to get a good strategy going. It, it takes some... some some effort. So uh, we're going to give it another go on Wednesday, Thursday. On Thursday, I think, is the next Ordus Rainy. We'll try one more out and uh, see how we like it. I think it's a cool game. I just think that it's going to take some some strategizing. It's definitely going to take some time. I've been reading some stuff online, but you got to read more. There's plenty of guides out there. Just check them out. Again, it's by John Sudbury Games. Uh, this was not provided um, free of charge, like special, because it just is free. You can go on to Steam right now and download it for free and to check it out. It's it's certainly worth it. Um, and I, I think it's my type of game. I'm just not good at it yet, so hopefully we can get to that point. But for now, we're out of time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel to stay updated to everything as it happens. And until next time, cheers.